And if you were to go online and look up um, even like the top 100 selling drugs in the United States, you'll find that many of them contain nitrogen groups. So many of these nitrogens get converted to the amine salts and probably one of the most common examples uh, that you would be familiar with is Benadryl. So Benadryl, if you look up the name on the back of um, the medication, you'll find that it's diphenhydramine. hydrochloride. This hydrochloride term means that the amine was reacted with HCl to form the amine salt. So if we look at the structure of Benadryl, okay, we have this amine, and this is referred to as the free base, because the basic nitrogen lone pair is still present. Then they react this with HCl. To get the amine salt. And this is how Benadryl sold commercially as this amine salt here. So the question then becomes, well, why go through this extra reaction step to convert many medications to a salt? Okay, there's several reasons. Uh, one of maybe the most important being the smell. So we know that amines tend to have fishy smells. The amine salts don't have that same smell. If you've ever smelled a salt, even like table salt, they tend to be odorless. So once they um, convert it to the salt and package them. You don't have to worry about um, you know bad smells coming out of the cold aisle at CVS. The second reason is because now by having the salt we have an ionic compound. An ionic compound is going to be a solid most of the time which means it's much easier to handle. So the solid, it's easy to put into the tablet form. Also, if you've ever bought um, you know, something like NyQuil that contains uh, Benadryl dissolved into a liquid form, well, the ionic solid is much easier to dissolve in the aqueous solution.
Um, then just another thing to consider with that goes hand in hand with it being ionic, it's water soluble, meaning it goes into the bloodstream more rapidly. And then finally, as far as storage and stability, salts tend to have a longer shelf life than the freebase amines.